Are you ready for another episode of Discography Discussion, where we take a deep dive into the studio albums of a certain artist, group, or band? And today, we're looking at Queens of the Stone Age, a band that I was never really familiar with, but just sort of knew their hit songs, like, um, Go With The Flow, or Threes and Sevens, which are pretty much the only two, maybe other songs as well that I like, but... Regardless, today we're here to look at all the studio albums that they've produced, which in total is six, and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Let's do this thing! Their first album is titled Queens of the Stone Age. It came out in the year 1998, the year I was born, uh, goes on for 46 minutes, and has a total of 11 tracks. Um, kind of a weird album. Um, a lot of really heavy rock and other influences but sort of loud <laughs> it sort of reminds me of like noise music in which there's a lot of heavy vocals that are just kind of in the mic but not screaming and a lot of the instrumentals can sometimes be really nice and flowing and uh, harmonic but at other times just kind of like someone's outraging on a guitar and just and it's it's okay it's an okay album uh, no real songs that I remember off of it too much. Nothing really memorable, but, you know, whatever. Next album. Next album is Rated R, which came out in 2000, two years later, uh, at 42 minutes. I think it's their shortest album, uh, and 11 tracks, again. Um, also, I should note that most of their albums stick to this kind of trend of being around 40 minutes, maybe maximum being an hour, but... Nothing really long, so eh, pretty easy to listen if you're being distracted, um, or if you need a distraction from something you're doing, so, yeah. Um, again, kind of the same thing as Queen, the first album, Queens of the Stone Age, the self-titled album, um, where it's just a lot of heavy, like, instrumentals at times, but then other times they're very harmonic and melodic, and then... Um, the vocals also sort of start to match this now, too, from lead singer Josh Hom, uh, where now you could definitely hear that he's taking it a little easier on some songs and trying to not be so loud and, and just, you know, uh, right on the mic and, you know, taking more of a tone to actually singing and making his vocals understandable, at least most of the time, but, um, definitely an improvement, but still not. My favorite thing on the planet. Um, the other thing is, there's a lot of songs that sort of... Uh, I kind of don't transition well into each other. Like, sometimes it'll go from one sort of theme in this song to just a completely different theme. And then the song after it will kind of go back to the general thing. And it just doesn't feel too great. It, it's just weird. I don't know. Um, but an improvement vocally. But, next album. Songs for the Deaf. I think probably their most iconic album, or at least their biggest album. Just in the sense that a lot of people listen to this one, and uh, it was definitely in the Billboard, like, top, I think, 25? Um, when it came out. Uh, came out in 2002, another two years later. Uh, one hour long. Their longest album, but... Kind of not really. They have another album that's 59 minutes, so one minute difference. Um, and 14 tracks. Um, there are most tracks on an album. Anyway, uh, again, uh, this album has really good uh, songs. Uh, songs that were definitely hits, like Go With The Flow. And uh, there are some other songs too, but that's pretty much the one that everyone seems to remember. And that's pretty much the song that kind of got everyone to go, yo, I like Queens of the Stone Age, but no one ever really listened to Queens of the Stone Age. Um, again, though, it kind of has the same thing that Rated R and Queens of the Stone Age album uh, both had, but this time it's weirder, because I would say that the first two albums definitely stick to the theme, generally, of switching between these sort of, maybe like, three, two or three tracks in a row of just kind of strong instrumentals, loud vocals, and then they would move on to something harmonic. Um, 
But here it almost feels like they manipulated what songs would be hits. And I know that's weird. I, I don't even think it was intentional technically, but it feels like they made songs that were definitely 100% meant to be heard on the radio all the time for whoever who knows how long. Uh, music videos that would be played on MTV. And songs that people would definitely keep coming back to later on. But the rest of this album does just not fit any of that at all. It fits more with the older style of the other two albums. Um, and it's really weird. It's... The only time I ever, maybe not ever from this point on, but from here and before, it's the first time I've ever seen an album and band purposely somehow make two, three songs that were definitely 100% meant to be played like majorly, but the rest of the songs were just kind of blending in with each other, and, and kind of okay. Um, yeah, it's really weird. I've never, I don't think I'll ever see it again either. Maybe, but I really doubt it. But, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's really weird. Next album. Lullabies to Paralyze. Probably tied, I would say, for favorite album. I won't say the other one because it's later, but... Definitely an album that I really liked. Um, came out in 2005, was 59 minutes long. See, only a minute shorter. And again, 14 tracks. Uh, same amount as Songs of the Deaf. I uh, actually really like this album. Uh, it, it's, it sticks with a theme, which is kind of lullabies and in the uh, smoother instrumentals. Um, but still somehow being uh, rock, rock and roll. and Well, not rock and roll, but rock influenced and and sort of, uh, prog rock. Um, yeah, I really like it. It has a really nice intro, uh, and this is definitely the first album where I started to notice something that I didn't even realize was a thing until I started to look it up, but apparently people think Josh Hom, uh, at times can sound like David Bowie, and yeah, that, that's kind of apparent in, in this album, um, and it's weird, but it's cool. Uh, Cool in a way that's just kind of like, wow, I didn't know anybody could do that. Or at least not like that. And not intentionally either. I know he's just kind of, Josh Hom is just trying to sing normally. But yeah, he definitely sounds a little more uh, like Bowie in this album than in the previous three. Mostly because, again, this album is more going with uh, melodic and, and not so loud and heavy hitting songs. And more so just songs that flow into each other and are very nice and and calming, uh, in a sense. Um, vocals are great, and instrumentals are great. Um, still definitely sticking with their, uh, you know, electric guitar, bass, and drum, and, and that's it kind of uh, theme. Um, and a lot of people tend to agree with me that this is either the album that they, they like the most, or uh, the album that either, the album that, like, basically made them go, oh, yeah, I actually kind of like this. I kind of like Queens of the Stone Age now. Um, the other three were kind of okay, hit or miss with most people. Um, and like I was saying with Songs of the Deaf, it's because like uh, their hit songs were pe songs that people liked and people thought that's what they would get with the whole album and then they listen to the whole album and they go, ugh. Whereas this one, you, you get what you're coming into. Uh, the songs early on, the introduction song and such, all fit all the way to the end. Um, so yeah, great, great album. Like I said, maybe my favorite tied with the other one, which we'll get to later, but next album, Era Vulgaris came out in 2007 is 47 minutes long and has 11 tracks. And it's what I would say fits more with the, uh, Josh Hom sounds like David Bowie, especially towards the end of this album. He sounds more and more and more like David Bowie than I ever thought. And it was to the point where it was really confusing, and I kind of had to look it up. Uh, not going to lie. Um, um, again, with kind of the same theme as the first three albums, where I like some songs, and I definitely like Threes and Sevens, which is another song that was really big. 
uh, kind of an MTV hit and, and everything. Um, and I really like that song, but a lot of the other songs sort of fit with that same... Uh, I don't want to say the word. Don't make me say it. Aesthetic is the first three, where it's just kind of a lot of really heavy instrumentals and vocals going with each other and songs that sound okay and they're legible, but they're not... Uh, legible means this is something for writing. Well, anyway, you can understand them really well, but they're not amazingly complex. Oh, complex is a weird word. But my point being that they're not really songs you, you need to take anything further than the surface. Uh, you, you get what you're hearing, and there's that's about it. Maybe the lyrics kind of explain something, but in reality, it's just kind of a lot of angry screaming and, and angst. Well, angst... Not so much, but just someone angry screaming into a microphone. Um, an okay album. I thought it was alright. Some of the songs were hit or miss again, but some of the songs were really great. Yeah, next album. Like Clockwork. Or rather, sorry, dot dot dot, like Clockwork. Um, after, uh, I think it's three, four years, after a hiatus, basically, um... Most of the band was kind of having trouble making... Uh, uh, we were coming up with the next album. Um, the drummer left. He was a drummer since the beginning. And then he just was like, oh, I'm done. And he left. So it got harder. But they, they pushed through. And this album came out in 2013. Uh, 45 minutes long. And only 10 tracks. And uh, Era Vulgaris is kind of what started this sort of... We're not going to really try so hard to make a lot of music for Queen, the band Queens of the Stone Age. Because... We don't really need to anymore. And the other thing is, Josh Hom is pretty spread thin. He, he has a lot of side projects, um, aside from Queens of the Stone Age, like uh, the Eagles Death Metal. Eagles? I think it's the Eagles Death Metal. And the Eagles of Heavy Metal. I'm sorry, I can't remember, but uh, there was that. And then um, them Vultures, which I, I, I love them. I only have one album, though, so... But anyway, uh, this album's okay. Uh... This definitely is a big change from Era Vulgaris to this, where now they're definitely sure uh, the sort of style they want to go with. They're adding new instrumentals from um, keyboards and synthesizers and some electronica sounds. Some, very little. Um, and definitely going more the approach of sort of songs you can understand uh, vocally, and instrumentally, but at the same time, they're still sort of heavy and hard-hitting uh, from time to time, but switching on and off to going with something a little more easy and smoother, uh, and I like that. It's actually a really nice balance. Granted, most of the songs don't really care for, except for I Sat by the Ocean, which is an amazing song, um, and that song is definitely a perfect example of what the whole album is like, so if you happen to like that song, or if you want to go take a listen to it, and then uh, if you happen to like it, uh, definitely check out this album, because you'll probably end up liking it anyway. Uh, it's a really good album, though. Eh, decent. But, meh. Next. Their final album, Villains. Uh, which came out just last year, 2017. Total of 48 minutes and 9 tracks. Their least amount of tracks on an album. Um, and this is the other one that I said was tied with my favorite. Um... This album is awesome. Uh, and also, I should say really quickly, um, I do tend to try to go for just the base album art uh, when I put the, the images here. And this one, I actually got a different version because I think the whole art is amazing. Um, and also, this art ties in with the last one's art um, from Like Clockwork. Uh, and, and I like it. <laughs> this art's really awesome. Uh, on the original album, it only really shows... Uh, I think Josh Hom and the the devil covering his face and that's about it. But you don't see him holding the guitar and everything. And I was like, what? Come on. So I got this version of it. Anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, definitely tied with my for my favorite. Every song feels absolutely different and like a new style, but it's awesome. It's amazing. All these songs are really, really, really good. Um, the other thing is it's a really short album so when you get through it you're kind of like man i wish there was like one or two more songs but whatever you know whatever um the other thing too is it, each of the songs has their own um different art for it done in the same art style as this here 
Uh, so definitely check out those music videos. They're here on YouTube. Um, they're all, I say music videos, but in like heavy quotations, because in reality, it's just like a tiny bit of animation on a still image. Um, but the, the, all the art is really good. You should definitely check that out if you have a chance. Um, but yeah, I, I love this entire album. Uh, definitely more electronica influence, but not in the sense where it changes their style or, or, um, or changes how their general sound is. They're definitely still rock and prog rock. And that's a good thing. Um, but it doesn't... Adding these electronica and other things, it's just sort of in tiny little places here and there. And it's not even in every song, honestly. It's only in maybe like three, four songs total out of the whole album. And, uh, and it sounds great. It complements everything else. Um, their vocals are definitely really well done. Um, he's definitely singing from the heart, uh, and you can hear that, and it's just a great album. I love this album. Um, yeah, it, I would say this one goes just a tiny bit, if not still tied with, um, Lullabies to Paralyze. Um, but yeah, definitely, 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 definitely take a look at this album if you can. It's short, it's relatively short, and it's really, really good. But, let's... Move on to the final thoughts. Mm, like I said, I kind of came into this not really knowing exactly what to expect, mostly because all the songs that I heard before were all songs that sounded nothing like what their style was. And I would say about halfway through, I was a little disappointed and, and sort of just like, man, I, I, I want to like them more, but I, I don't. I just I don't really get it, but... Uh, Definitely towards the end, after Lullabies to Paralyze, though, I, I was like, wow, yeah, okay. I, I actually kind of like this now. So, um, understandable that, that, you know, the times change and so do their style of uh, music. But unlike the past three, where I've kind of been like, I prefer their older stuff, but not their newer stuff, I actually would say it goes the reverse for Queens of the Stone Age, where I prefer more of their newer albums than their older albums. Uh, definitely their style changed and, and matured with them, and it got better. And the other thing, too, was, like I said, when uh, when I was saying that uh, Josh Hom and some of the other band members are spread thin because they're trying to do for... Uh, they're trying to do music for, like, three, four other bands, at like, at the same time. Um, that is somewhat of a burden in the sense that it's more work for them to write for Queens of the Stone Age and, and others. But it's actually kind of a good thing because it gives them a little more chance to think more about um, how they're writing songs and how to master them and the production on them. And, and it works. It really works. It definitely benefits the albums more, especially when you see albums like Clock, well, like, like Clockwork and Villains and how they change, but they're definitely way better. So... I would say, if you're like me, and you've heard their older songs, or well, not their older songs, but if you've heard those hit songs and that's it, I would definitely say check, check at least Lullabies to Paralyze, Era Vulgaris, Light Clockwork, and Villains, because those are definitely albums I think you would enjoy. But that's a lot of time invested into that, and, you know, that's neither here nor there, but, you know, whatever. Um, but definitely, if you're a fan of any kind of rock from sort of that uh, mid two thousands and such. This is definitely a band that you might enjoy, and I might also be wrong. You might also enjoy their older albums more than I did. So definitely go ahead and take a look at that as well. If you're even remotely a fan, they're definitely a band to check out and listen to all their albums. But that's about all I've got to say. Uh, thank you for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If there's any way I can improve, go ahead and leave a comment, and I will definitely tell myself, well, you can improve that. Um, if you want to see more videos of these, hit the subscribe button, because, of course, they're coming every two weeks. So that's every other Sunday. Not not next week Sunday, but next next week Sunday. Um, yeah, and if there's any um, groups or artist, group, or band that you want me to listen to, also leave that in the comments below, because I would definitely be open to anyone's suggestions, and I'd definitely like to see what you guys would like to hear, or what you guys 
would like me to hear next. And maybe it's an artist that you happen to like and you want me to give a bit of a critique on them. Then go ahead. I'd definitely be open to anyone. But do know that I also have a long line of people that I would also like to listen to myself. But regardless, thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day. And bye-bye.